When you think of the San Antonio Spurs before Tim Duncan arrived, who comes to mind? Well, it should be David Robinson. Throughout the 1990s, Robinson was the guy leading the way, carrying the Spurs to the playoffs and leaving his mark as one of the greatest big men of all time. However, on the other side of the spectrum, Robinson and the Spurs were on the receiving end of a lot of playoff disappointments. For years and years, they would constantly lose to Charles Barkley and the Suns, Carl Malone, John Stockton and the Jazz, and of course, Hakeem Olajuwon and the Rockets. A series that we all remember today. The year when Robinson won the MVP, the Spurs finished with the best record in the entire league, and then they would get obliterated by Hakeem and the Rockets. In fact, nowadays, that's probably what Robinson is most known for. Not his crazy numbers or his ridiculous talent, but his shortcomings. How's it going folks, my name's Andy, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at the career of David Robinson. How good was he, actually? Was he as good as the other greats of the 1990s, and why wasn't he able to find success before Tim Duncan got there? To start things off, Robinson was drafted as the first overall pick in 1987. The same draft class as other notable stars like Scottie Pippen, Kevin Johnson, and Reggie Miller. However, because Robinson was serving in the US Navy, he did not sign a contract with the Spurs right away. There were some negotiations back and forth from both sides regarding his contract. But eventually, after his service, Robinson would sign with the Spurs to a contract that nearly matched the highest paid players in the NBA. So there was an immense amount of pressure on the young Robinson right away, as the Spurs were near the bottom of the league before he got there. When he joined the team in 1989, he was 24 years old and made an immediate impact on the team. Robinson won Rookie of the Year in a landslide, averaging 24, 12, and 2 with nearly 4 blocks a game. That's insane for a rookie, and he was already recognized as one of the best big men of the league. Arguably a top 3 center in the NBA, right behind Hakeem Olajuwon and Patrick Ewing. And that was as a rookie. He also made the All-NBA 3rd team and 2nd team All-Defense, and he made the All-Star team. It was one of the greatest rookie seasons of all time, and to cap it all off, he turned the entire Spurs franchise around. The team had one of the biggest turnarounds in NBA history, going from winning 21 games in the previous season to 56 games and the second seed in the Western Conference. The roster saw some major changes, so part of the credit has to go to his new teammates too, especially when the Spurs got Terry Cummings, a former All-Star and a huge part of their turnaround as well. In the 1990 playoffs, the Spurs would dominate the Denver Nuggets in the first round, sweeping the series as they had no answer for David Robinson. Unfortunately, they would fall in the second round to the Portland Trail Blazers in seven games. The Blazers would go on to the NBA Finals, where they would eventually lose to the Pistons. After a very successful rookie season under his belt, the future was looking bright for Robinson and the Spurs. They had a great group of young guys including Sean Elliott, Rod Strickland, and Willie Anderson. These four would become the core of the team for the next few years, with Robinson leading the charge. The rest of the league took notice as well and definitely paid attention to what Robinson was doing. Hakeem Elijah once said what surprised him most was how he was so quick. You can't blink or else he'll go right by you. Robert Parrish said, if he's having this type of year now, his first year out, the sky's the limit. Tom Chambers said that Robinson played at a Nike exhibition game and he was dominating guys like Charles Barkley and Moses Malone. Hubie Brown said, I think he's a surprise. Not that he isn't outstanding, but that he is a superstar. I think that people didn't realize how big and strong he was. And then the fact that he would block as many shots and rebound as much as he's rebounding. As you can tell, the Admiral took the entire league by storm, and was already recognized as one of the league's brightest young superstars. The expectations of Robinson and the Spurs were as high as ever. But unfortunately, the next few years were pretty stagnant. From 1991 to 1994, the Spurs would lose in the first round three out of the four times. Robinson himself was still really, really good as he continued to make All-NBA, All-Defensive teams, All-Star teams. Individually, he was a top 3 center in the league, arguably top 2. But the roster surrounding him really wasn't working out. 
They had a pretty similar team for the first five years of his career, and after a couple of coaching changes, Robinson was starting to get a little bit impatient. However, after hiring John Lucas, their new head coach in 1993, Robinson would have the best individual season of his NBA career. With Lucas wanting to run the offense more through Robinson, the Spurs' offensive rating took a huge jump. They were previously hovering around 14th or 18th in offensive rating for a couple of years, but in the 1993-94 season, the Spurs would register the 4th best rating in the league. Robinson averaged a career-high 29.8 points a game, and led the entire league in scoring. This was the year where he scored 71 points in the last game of the regular season, beating out Shaquille O'Neal for the scoring title. He also averaged a career high in assists, with nearly 5 per game. While Robinson and the Spurs were set to enter the 1994 playoffs on a high note, it went very poorly. He had a terrible series by his standards, shooting an abysmal percentage, and the Spurs would lose in the first round once again, in 4 games to the Utah Jazz. Carl Malone utterly destroyed him, making him look like a high schooler. Afterwards, despite Robinson's very successful season, coach John Lucas got fired and the Spurs went back to the drawing board. The following season would be the best one yet. In the 1994-95 season, the entire team wanted redemption. They finished with a 62-20 record, and up until that point, it was their best record in franchise history. Robinson was named the MVP to the delight of his teammates and the organization, but to the dismay of his biggest rival, Hakeem Olajuwon. The Spurs would have their best playoff run of the Robinson era, reaching the Western Conference Finals. Unfortunately, the run would stop here. This time, it was Hakeem Olajuwon, hungry and prideful as he watched the commissioner hand the MVP trophy to Robinson. As his teammates said, that was a mistake as they handed him the trophy before the series started. Hakeem would play the best series of his entire career against the Spurs, averaging over 35 points, 12 rebounds, 5 assists, and 4 blocks. On the other hand, Robinson, well, he didn't have a terrible series, but it was clear he was getting outplayed left and right by Hakeem. After losing in 6 games, Robinson took this loss harder than anyone else. He knew that him and Hakeem were two of the top centers in the league, and they would always be compared to each other in the media. Hakeem has always outplayed him before, but this time, Robinson was the reigning MVP and everyone thought this would be his year. It just wasn't, and once again, Robinson got sent home after an underwhelming series. So, what is it with Robinson's game that made him drop off during the playoffs? You could tell from looking at his numbers, his playoff stats see a drastic drop off from his regular season numbers. Is he simply not good enough? Is he getting outplayed? Yeah, that is true, and to be honest, part of it had to do with Robinson's approach to the game. He was very dominant in the regular season, but he was also a rather predictable player. He did not handle double teams as well as other bigs, and his offensive game sometimes looked very stagnant. Very predictable post moves, and he wasn't super adept at finishing with his right hand. That's why a lot of older, more experienced teams with more experienced big men like Hakeem or Karl Malone knew how to defend him to limit his effectiveness. Fast forward a bit, and before the 1996-97 season started, Robinson threw out his back, and then later on, he broke his foot. This caused him to miss all but six games of that season. Greg Popovich, who was previously the Spurs GM, decided that, you know, I'm gonna coach this team by myself. And thus, he named himself the new head coach. And they lost a lot of games. But in hindsight, this whole disaster of a season was a blessing in disguise. The Spurs won only 20 games and was granted the number one pick of the 1997 NBA draft. The pick that they used to draft, yep, Tim Duncan. Almost immediately, Duncan would take over the team and become their best player. Robinson would become a two-time champion, once in 1999 and again in 2003. By this time, he was merely a role player, a great role player nonetheless, but the Spurs were moving in a different direction. And after 2003, Robinson would retire. So, how good was David Robinson actually? Well, he was pretty damn amazing, one of the best players of the 1990s, but he got overshadowed by others. Individually and statistically, his numbers were just as impressive as a guy like Hakeem or Patrick Ewing or Shaq. I would still put him as a top 10 or maybe top 8 center of all time. 
Another knock on him is his longevity. His prime was relatively short compared to other superstars as he only really had 6 or 7 seasons where he was a legit superstar. I guess that's partly because he entered the NBA at the age of 24, which is on the older side. Also, he was one of a few players who ever recorded a quadruple double. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on the Admiral. Where would you rank him among the best centers of all time? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.